Hello friends! In this tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to use Godot's built-in tune shader, and at the end of this video, I'll give you a sneak peek at my custom cell shader. Let's get to it! I've gone ahead and opened up a new Godot project. Let's go ahead and make a new 3D scene by creating a new root node. I'm going to rename it Tutorial. Let's drag our companion sphere into our 3D scene. Click on it in the node editor. Go to the inspector and zero out the translation. Uh, we want to add a few other things to this scene as well. I'm going to add a camera. I'm going to move it just a little bit so we can see our sphere. I'm also going to add a directional light. And let's move this in our 3D scene and give it a nice angle. The actual 3D position of a directional light really doesn't matter. It is only the angle of the directional light that determines the direction the light is coming from. Now that we have everything in place, I'm going to go ahead and save this scene. To test the scene, hit F6. This is what our sphere looks like currently from the view of our camera. Make sure the sphere node is selected in the scene tree. Let's add a tune shading material to our sphere. Then head to the material property in the inspector. Click on the empty field and select new spatial material. Click on the new material to enter into its properties. Under parameters, diffuse mode, select tune. Under the albedo property, let's set the color of our sphere. How about a nice light blue? The settings that affect the transition between our base color and our shade color can be found under the roughness property. If we want to add a specular highlight to our cell shaded sphere, we have to go back under the parameters menu, find specular mode, and change it as well to tune shading. The roughness property also controls the specular highlight. To control the opacity of the specular highlight, head under the metallic menu and change the specular setting. It's important to note that in Godot's default tune shader, the directional light color will also affect the surface color of our object. Godot's built-in tune shader might work well for simple projects, but it doesn't offer a lot of options for customization. For me personally, it doesn't really meet my needs, so I wrote my own custom cell shader. For the end of this video, I'll give you a sneak peek of what I've been working on and the direction these tutorials are heading. Here is a demo project that I made to showcase my custom cell shader. In a future tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how to use it step by step and going over the parameter settings. But for those who don't want to wait, the demo project and shader are currently available on the Dave the Dev GitHub page linked below in the description. The shader and demo model assets are all made by me and are under the MIT license, so feel free to use them in your own projects. Well that does it for this video. If I succeeded in showing you something awesome, consider hitting the like button. Or if you want to see future videos, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Finally, if you have questions or suggestions, I'd love to hear from you. Comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you. See you in the next video!